Hello and welcome to this week's Rugby League Batcher. After a big, big week on the field, we have three guests to talk us through exactly what is going on. They are the editor of League Express, Martin Sadler, leading coach, Alan Kilshaw, and the Salford director of rugby, Ian Blees. Gents, welcome. We've got to start with London, Martin. I mean, they've won again. They've now <laughs> won six out of 18 games. They're joint on points with Hull, KR and Leeds at the bottom. They, they just aren't going away, are they? Danny Ward keeps smiling, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. And... Um, Fantastic win in, in Perpignan at, uh, at the weekend on Saturday. Uh, a thoroughly deserved win, I've got to say. Uh, I thought they outplayed the Catalans more or less from beginning to end of that game. Um, it was tremendously exciting for if you're a London fan, and it comes on the back of them beating St. Helens at home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got to say that it, they're probably the form team of Super League at the moment, and, uh, and that's with great respect to Ian here, whose team won on Sunday against Wakefield. But um, it's, it's just making this relegation battle more and more exciting. And it's a bit ironic, isn't it, that St. Helens are sort of running away at the top of the league. Uh, it looks like a one-horse race to finish top. But at the bottom, it's, you know, at least a three-horse race, possibly a four-horse race, and maybe even a six-horse race. So that's, that's really interesting. And, you know, I hate to say it, Ian, but you're still just on the edge of the relegation yeah. battle. They're on the edge on, of the playoff battle as well. You're on the edge well, of the playoff though. battle as well. So, you know, how, how do you view it? Yeah, we, 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 I saw some comments Chris Chester made after our game on Sunday when we beat Wakefield, and he said, they're in a re relegation battle. Well, we must be the same then, because we're on the same points as... Is Wakefield, so yeah, but with a couple of points off top five, so the league's really tight this year. And, and London did really, really well going to Catalan, getting a great result there. And Danny Ward's done a great job with that team. Uh, and, and same as Ian Watson at, at Salford, we, 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 we've not won for a few weeks, but it's great, mm -hmm. great to get the win again. And we're going for top five, not, not looking below us. So, uh, interesting few weeks ahead. Alan, be honest, did you think that London had a chance of, of being as competitive as they have been? I think that the what they've got is the home form and the home ground, so there's always tough to play there, but um, they were underprepared a little bit when, when they came up. I don't think anyone picked them to, to, to come up, and I think they were underprepared themselves. So to, to pick up the early wins, um, sometimes when that promoted team goes up, you get that bounce, and, and they win a few games in a row, and then they have a dip. Um, they've come back strong, haven't they? And like you say, they, you know, they are winning games away they're, now. They're winning games away. They've the, won at Leeds and won at Catalans. The, the, the two in a row, a big game on Thursday night. Is anyone going to say that they will stay up then? Is anyone prepared to make that call just yet? Or we still That's a really tough call, isn't it? I, 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 I think I'm at the stage now where I just can't predict. You know, you can't. You, any prediction you make, you, you, you're bound to. I've look seen. Stupid I've seen where afterwards. you are on the media prediction <laughs> yeah. table, and you definitely can't. <laughs> no, no, They've really. got a great chance, haven't they? They're playing well. Yeah. They're playing good football. The yeah. team are really fit. You can see that they're really fit on the pitch. They work for one another. They've got a great team spirit. Mm -hmm. They've got a great coach, so they've got a chance. But, but the thing about the thing about London, Matt, is you know the, this this game this Thursday. Um, at the start of the season, you might have thought it would be a not much of a game because. I'm sure the fixture compilers and, and Sky, when they selected it for TV, probably thought, well, London will be probably tailed off by then. It'll be a bit of a nothing game, but we've got to show them at some time, so we might as well stick them on a Thursday night early in June. And actually, it's turned out now to be okay. one of the games of the season, potentially. The, the biggest game, the biggest of, the game of the season, so certainly in terms of the relegation battle. And I think it'll get a really big audience, both mm -hmm. hopefully live, I don't know what the crowd will be, but certainly on... on on uh, on Sky, I'm sure there'll be a lot of fans from all the other clubs, including Salford and and Leeds and so on. Will be watching that game intently mm -hmm. and uh, wondering how it's going to go. Let's not rule out Hull KR though, Ian, because we're talking about London. They beat Warrington. They've picked up some decent results in the in the past. I mean, they, they turned you over in the Challenge Cup out of nowhere. So yeah, and the Magic Weekend. The, as well. And the, so they can they're clearly capable, yeah, aren't they? I think as we, as we said. We, Teams can beat each other now on a regular basis, which is great for the game. Okay, I've made some decent signings the last few days as well. Uh, we've done a swap deal with them recently as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan Lannan coming to us and Daniel Murray going the other way. So each team seems to be juggling for position now, getting the right players in. Uh, injuries will play a part in that, but it's a great competition. Hull KR, Huddersfield, ourselves, Wakefield, we're all either looking up or looking down, depending on which view you've got. And what's crucial is that there are a lot of really tight games in mm -hmm. Super League this season. And clubs like yours, you know, have finished on the wrong end of some yeah, yeah. two-point scorelines, yeah. you know, once or twice. Huddersfield are in the same boat, I yeah, think. Lost three know, games by where a point. Losing, three, losing games but really closely. Mm. And if you're not careful, you suddenly find yourself, you know, battling the bottom sides. You, you wouldn't have imagined Huddersfield 
when they beat Hull 55-2 at the Magic Weekend, my assumption then was, God, they're going to be a top five side without mm -hmm. the slightest doubt. They were brilliant that day. But they've blown it since then, haven't they? With, with several difficult, you know, marginal defeats. And uh, before you know it, they're only two points clear of the relegation battle. What about Leeds, Alan? Because we can mention the London LKR leads the joint bottom as well, having got some wins themselves recently. They'll be petrified at the minute, won't they? Yeah, and it's sometimes deflating for that to see those other teams. So Leeds, you know, close loss on Friday night. They probably would have been expecting Warrington and, and Catalans to to do the business or do them a favour on, on Saturday, and, and then you know the reverse of that's happened. So it, you know, everyone says we we don't look at the other teams' results. We concentrate on us. That's that's a bit of a lie because people will be and you'll you'll be you'll be writing down who you think's going to win. Are we going to get points here? And, and, and that's just something that you'll do naturally. And they would have been deflated by that. Um, I do think with Richard there, I think that they will be too strong with with, with the players they've got. Um, but nobody's too good to go down. Yeah, I mean, surely, surely, surely though, Leeds they can't go down, can can they? <laughs> It's really going to be. It's going to be tough to call it out, isn't it? At this yeah. stage of the season, there's a lot of rugby to be played. There's a lot of results to happen. There's a lot of losses, you know, for teams to to take on the chin, really. So it's going to be really, really interesting back half of the season. I think Leeds have probably got, as Alan said, probably got a uh, bit too much class. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been saying that all out. season, though, so far. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's, been a, it's been a funny season, bottom. Martin, and I think I think there's still a lot to go and. and I think they'll find some form. I, I definitely mm. believe they'll find some form. Sure. Does it, we say it's a six-horse race, but can, Matt, can you see anyone being dragged into it that's not been at the bottom all year? A, a Wakefield? I mean, even Cass are only six points off. Are, are well, they still going to be too good? Well, Castleford were beaten fairly comfortably last Thursday by, by Hull FC. And I, I think Hull FC are an interesting case because... Mm -hmm. On a few of their performances this season, you might have said they were a relegation team, potentially. <laughs> say they were a League, but, a league One team they've, sometimes. They've, they've, now, they've now started playing really well. I mean, I mm. thought they were outstanding against Castleford in the second half of that game. And, and Jake Connor, who is one of my favourite players in the game, I, I think he's probably the best ball-handling player. That, that he, some of his offloads are just crazy, aren't they? And when, when he's got Albert Kelly right by him, waiting, waiting for those offloads... You know, they're a tremendous threat to anybody. Throw in Jamie Shaw as well, who's, who's got equal pace, you know, running onto balls from the back. And I think I think Hull FC now, to me, look like a genuine threat to Warrington for second place in the table. I think that's, that's you know, going to really develop. And um, that, that Challenge Cup semi-final between Hull and Warrington looks a real thriller at the moment. The way I see it, you know, you've got Connor and, and Kelly and so on against Blake Austin. You know, that, that's a real game to look forward to. Do we do we see anyone competing <coughs> with Saints, Ian? Are they, are they by far and away the best team? Outstanding team, definitely. Uh, but I, I guess you, you, you've got Warrington in there pumping away. You, you, you've got, I, I still think Castleford are, are going to come good as well. We've got them this Friday, so that's going to be an interesting game. But there's class all around the pitch on, on these types of teams. And I think they can, but it's good to see sort of like the, the non-fashionable clubs beating teams as well, mm -hmm. up, up high in the league, which is good for the game. It's great for the competition. Uh, but yeah, I can see Saints probably going all the way this year. Well, they always say the sign of a great competition is when the bottom team can beat the top team in, on a one-off fixture. And London did that. Definitely didn't they? got that competition. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, let's let's ask some <coughs> questions about London's success. They have won thirty three percent of the game, Talon. The highest percentage has ever been for a team that's finished bottom in the Super League game is twenty six percent. What does that tell us about how competitive Super League is right now? Well, stats are there, aren't they? And like you say, it's that close, and people anyone can beat anyone on the day. So it's probably as competitive as, as it's been. I think the changing structures help with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, teams are, are more settled. Um, but London have, uh, have surprised quite a lot of people. Can they keep doing it? I suppose mm -hmm. that's the question. There's, there's plenty of twists and, 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 and stories, I'm sure. I think 11, 12 rounds left. I mean, that is, that is frightening, that statistic. Is it? Imagine it is, if, yeah. you, if I told you at the start of the year you win a third of your games, you wouldn't think you'd be getting relegated. No, you? and I guess what it's sort of like they've got to be prepared for now. Nobody's going to take them lightly. So the element of surprise has gone now because everybody knows that they can beat mm. you. So we went there early in the season. We knew because we've been beating there in the previous year mm -hmm. in the eights that, that they're a tough team at home and they are a tough team and they, and they play. They've got the form away now as well. So mm -hmm. uh, no team's going to take them lightly now. Definitely not. Here's another thing, Martin. 13 of the players that played for London on Saturday played in the Championship last year. 
So what does that tell us about the gap between Super League and Championship? It tells now? us it's diminishing, doesn't it? And, 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 and it's not just that that tells us that, because this season in the Challenge Cup, we've seen Bradford beating Leeds, we've seen Halifax beating London, mm -hmm. oddly enough. And, um, London beat Saints. It's, it, yeah, it's, and it's... Lots of the and playground. It's, yeah, well, you're trying to say Halifax can beat St. Helens <laughs> in the Challenge Cup semi-final. I think you've got to go whistle for that, again, I'm afraid. <laughs> but... Um, no, it, it's 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 a closing gap between the two competitions, and that's why um, I don't know whether we're going to talk about this later. But but when we look at the new broadcast deal from 2022, whoever negotiates that deal, we've got to make it a game-wide deal because the championship deserves a tremendous broadcasting deal as well as Super League. You know, I, I really hope that that that, that somebody can, you know persuade broadcasters, not just Sky, but perhaps others too, that the championship is, is, is a, going to be a really rewarding competition to broadcast, mm -hmm. because I think it will be. And, you know, you look at the championship now, the top seven or eight teams mm -hmm. are incredibly competitive against each other. Um, and obviously one of them is going to come up at the end of the season, probably Toronto, we imagine. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's at one time dropping out of Super League into the championship would have been a disaster. Yeah. Probably not now quite so well, much the, because the com competition is such a good competition. The other thing is as well, we're seeing more and more teams recruit from Super League going down to the championship. Even already Huddersfield have signed Chester Butler, Castleford have signed Tyler Heppitt, Wigan have signed a few in the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, are Super League clubs looking more and more at the championship now as a, as a place to recruit? I think, I think it's a great, I mean, it's, it's, you get great experience from the championship as a player. And if we put somebody out on loan, we always go championship because it toughens them up and it makes them, yeah. it makes them uh, earn the coin, so so to speak. Uh, we took a couple in, over the last few years. Chris Brining has been to mine. Darrell Oldpert yeah. we got from Newcastle. So there's definitely good players there. And I think the gap has definitely reduced. It's a great competition. You've got you've got Toronto heading it. You've got Toulouse chasing. You've got Lee now making a bit of a spurt. So it's going to yeah. be a really, really good final, you know, final part of the season for the championship. Now, here's the big question. Are we competitive enough? Have we got enough quality to go back to a fourteen team Super League, Alan? I think we've like we've discussed with the championship, I think you could you could put the top two championship teams in, in Super League this year, they'd be competitive. Mm. We spoke about those the Bradford beating Leeds, Halifax beating London, you know, on a on a one off. But if they're playing week in, week out, I think I think the the player pool is getting big enough to, to, to uh you know facilitate fourteen teams. Is it time for that conversation to be had again? I think the conversation has been had uh, already. It's how it's how the finances split into into fourteen that the clubs have got to to, to discuss. Uh, there's, there's definitely clubs that could, I think, show up well in Super League. Toulouse, Toronto, yeah. Lee were there previously and, and mm -hmm. performed well. So it's definitely it's been on the agenda. But how it how it sits financially is is is, is the call, and maybe it sits better when the new TV deals are sorted out. Maybe. Do you think? Whoever takes on the broadcast deal moving forward would prefer fourteen teams. Of mine it certainly has its. Oh, I think that I, I, I think whoever whoever ends up being the broadcaster, or perhaps there'll be more than one broadcaster. I think we've got to be able to demonstrate that the game is expanding and growing. You know, if I were if I were Sky or or any other you know BT Sport if they're involved or or even the BBC, I would want to know where the game's going. You know, I, mm -hmm. because. Ultimately, if the game is going to be restricted to the north of England, then it's not really going to have the viewership that, that you'd want to justify a huge deal. So we've got to be able to demonstrate how we're going to draw more people in. And ultimately, if you're going to go with Sky, you've got to demonstrate to Sky how you're going to get more subscribers for them, mm -hmm. because that's what drives their business, subscribers to Sky. And if we can't demonstrate that we've got a plan to draw more people in, then we're going to be struggling, aren't we, to, mm -hmm. to get a deal that's either comparable with the one that we've got now or certainly not one that's bigger. Yeah. So, you know, that's the problem that faces the game. I think we've got the interesting concepts of Ottawa and New York coming in at some stage as well over the next couple of years. That'll be interesting to see which, which way that goes and, yeah. and maybe that's, you know, high on the TV well, agenda. Well, it was Newcastle very interesting well. last week. Newcastle won't yeah, be Newcastle far away. Yeah, it's very interesting last week to see some comments made by the um, Super League sponsor, Fred Dunn, the chairman of Betfred, who was saying, you know, that the, the great thing that's happened for him this year is that Super League has over-delivered on its sponsorship. And, and he specified in particular being able to get the Betfred logos all around the New Camp Stadium. Mm. He, he was too. really thrilled to bits by that. I was speaking to Fred 
you know, and, and it, it's true. I, I don't think I'm giving away too much confidence by saying, it, you know, he, he was absolutely delighted to see that and would be only, you know, he suggested that we should take the magic weekend to Barcelona, you know, let people have a week's holiday on the Costa Brava or wherever. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, so, so when you can over deliver on, on, you know, and it's a bit like Super League this week, isn't it? This, coming back to this game on Thursday night, London, London Hulkingston Rovers, I think we're over delivering on what perhaps yeah. Sky thought they were getting, you know, before the, be, be, before the start of the season. So just to wrap this up on, on the field, Anyone going to put the neck on the line and say London will not be the team to get relegated? <laughs> Silence. Silence. <laughs> I think we're all sitting on the fence. <laughs> we'll end it there. We'll end yeah. it there. Well, that's the first part of this week's Rugby League Bat Chat. Done. After the break, we'll be talking to Ian about all things Salford and moving on to the Championship. We'll be right back. You've spoken and we've listened. Rugby League Back Chat is available on podcast form from all your best podcast providers. If you're on a trip down the M62 or a flight to Toronto or Toulouse, download Rugby League Back Chat for the best debate inside Rugby League. Welcome back to this week's edition of Rugby League Back Chat. We're going to start by going to Ian. We're going to pick your brains a little bit, Ian, about what's going on at Salford because we have a lot of rumours, a lot of doom and gloom sayers about Salford and their plight. What is the situation of Salford right now? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's always been the same since I've been there. It's, it's a monthly struggle. It's a yearly struggle, not uh, just on the pitch, off the pitch as well. So we're, we're a community club now. We're, we're governed by a board of directors who are trying very, very hard to keep stability within the club. But that's difficult with Marwan leaving mm -hmm. last year. It's been really tough and I think we've done exceedingly well. Uh, off the pitch is, is, is difficult, but we've done really well on the pitch. We've kept the focus on the pitch this year. Uh, me, me and Ian Watson have tried to keep everything away from the players mm -hmm. so they can focus and win games for us, really. It must be quite uh, annoying, frustrating, uh, disappointing when you see other club chairmen or, or whoever coming out and saying, oh, we're having a look at Salford and their situation. This seems to be quite public and you're obviously just trying to crack on and get the job done. Yeah, we try and not focus on what other people say. That's just the way it's been. And myself and Ian played for the club, so we know what it's all about, about mm -hmm. you know digging deep for one another and, and, and making that siege mentality within the club. So we've really got that. Uh, and we, we just concentrate on what we can affect on the pitch. Mm -hmm. and at the moment, it's, you know, it's going pretty well. Uh, <clears throat> we've lost a bit of form lately, but we, we, we've certainly... Mm -hmm. uh, had some great games where we've, we've we've had some great victories as well. You know, Warrington away, we beat Catalan away, Huddersfield away. We've we've had better away form than we are, we've had at home, yeah. but this year. Uh, so hopefully we'll we'll carry on doing that. Yeah, the thing that strikes me about Salford, you, you've had you you play some really great rugby in my view. I think you're a an incredibly attractive team to watch. You've got some great personalities on the pitch. Obviously, Jackson Hastings is a a pretty, I'd say, a cult figure actually among Salford fans, and and the Salford fans seem seem to follow you in numbers when you go away from home, mm. but when you're back at the um, AJ Bell Stadium, you just don't seem to be able to draw crowds that that are actually worthy of you. You know, you I, I think you deserve to be selling out the stadium, yet you're a long way from doing that. What, what what's what's wrong with the people of Salford that um, <laughs> they won't come out in bigger numbers to support you? I think I think we lost the nucleus of. of uh... The, the heartland of a uh, fan when we moved away from the Willows. But mm. we've got a great facility there and, and people talk, have talked for many years about it's hard to get in and out of here. Well, it's not. Not now, it's, no. It, it's pretty decent. Yeah, now. it's so, been improved, hasn't it? Yeah, and I, I think I think gradually, you know, the, the crowds are up on last year. I think last time I looked, it was by, up by 25%. So they, they get, we, had a, we didn't have a decent year the year before, mm. though. So we had a better year this year We're playing some great rugby. We've got yeah, some yeah. superstars within the team. Uh, and... and it's no good calling the fans out because we've got to produce on the pitch to bring them in. And we've got to do that back 
office stuff well mm -hmm. in the community, in the schools and bring, bring the kids in. You know, we give free tickets out to everyone under 16. We give free tickets to all the community clubs. So we're really doing our bit, but it doesn't happen overnight, Martin. It, it, it takes a few mm. years to do. I mean, if crowds are up 25%, though, you talked about how it can be a monthly struggle, a yearly struggle. If the crowds are up by that much, that must be a big factor in you not having to survive month by month. Yeah. The, Long term. The, the, the crowds are basically in line with budget. It's the commercial side where we just struggle a little bit. Right. And it's getting businesses involved and it's not having a b big back office is something mm. that we're trying to build. And we, you do need that as a Super League, mm. as a Super League club. And we've, and we've struggled in that area because we've really tried to focus on the rugby, getting, getting the rugby right on the pitch at first. Mm. So... Uh, but we, we, you know, we're beavering away in the background. We're like swans. We look all nice and tidy above the water, and, we, and we're very busy under the water, yeah. <laughs> scrambling yeah. around trying to trying to do what's best for the club. But yeah, uh, yeah it's an ongoing struggle. But it, it's all for that's 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 the way it is. But all the, you know, some of the I want to call it scaremongering. I guess it's not as bad as it can be made out. Then I guess I don't know who's scaremongering. Might if I'm honest. I don't well, there just seems there seems to be a lot of people that come out and say this and that about Salford or they may be not looking looking too great. But then you all, nothing ever seems to develop. From no, I, mean, I think we've done really well this year, keeping everything intact yeah. and, and you know knuckling down. But as I said, it, you know we have to keep every pound counts to us, and that's yeah. why we make sure any decision we make on and off the pitch is mm -hmm. is, is the right one for the club. Uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's not an easy life, that's for sure. But <laughs> It is what it is. On the field, you've, I think you probably punch above weight every, every year, certainly from what the tipsters say. Mm. Ian Watson, I feel sorry for a little bit because he has to build a squad, he builds a squad, yeah. and then they all get picked off by other clubs. He's, he, he may be going through that again now. That must be frustrating as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit demoralising as well. You know, It's a bit tiresome that every year you've got to try and rebuild. I think we've got six, seven, eight players out of But at least it keeps it all year. fresh, Ian. Yeah, it does. That's the, and point. That's the positive, Martin. Yeah, but when, you're, to, yeah. when you're up all night on phone calls to Australia, <laughs> it takes it out of you a little bit. But, yeah. And I read, I read something where uh, Alex Ferguson said, if you get four or five players out of contracts, that's the norm. Mm. You know, we've got six, seven, eight this year. So mm -hmm. It seems a bit too heavy for me. But again, it is what it is, and we're doing our best to, to recruit. Pound for pound, I'll come to you, Matt. Is there a better coach in Salford than Ian Watson with what he does. Well, he's not a better coach Salford. in Salford, but what do you mean? Is he a better coach <laughs> is, is, in Super League? Sorry, is he <laughs> pound for pound the best coach? It's certainly Super coming League. near to it. I mean, I'd say, I mean, the two the the, the, the two real contenders for coach of the year um, this year. I mean, you, 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 Justin Holbrook, you've got to put him in a category by himself, really. But but apart from him, the two contenders are Ian Watson and Danny Ward, aren't they? You know, both done a fantastic job as far as I'm concerned. Salford, I think, is such an important club. It, it, it's, it's right in the heart of Greater Manchester where we, we, we need a big presence. Yeah. You know, this is probably the second biggest, um, se se second bis biggest cosmopolitan area in Britain after London. And, you know, I've sometimes said that the two, the two most important clubs in the long term in Rugby League, are probably in, in Super League, are probably London and Salford. Mm -hmm. You know, we need a big presence in London. We need a club that's achieving big things in London. But we also need a club that's achieving big things in the heart of Greater Manchester. Mm -hmm. This is such a major sporting part of the, part of the country. So, you know, I, I would love to see, you know, sometime further down the track... Yeah. A grand final between London and Salford, wouldn't that be great? Oh, Alan, in, in, ter <laughs> in, in terms of uh, Ian Watson, um, you would know as, as a coach, if you were to lose as many players as he has, then get them and an other squad together, be as successful as they are, he's done some job there, hasn't he? He has, and I've been very fortunate to watch him quite a bit this year through other media duties, and the, the performance at Warrington was one of the best I've seen all year, and like, like Martin and you said, they play some really good rugby league some attracts rugby league I think what was good for them this season is um, their spine carried over so when they got back to pre-season obviously Jackson had gone there back end of last year Hastings Louis Evolds uh, you know that spine was, was, was already in place and I think uh, round one at Huddersfield it was a bit of a shot result for quite a few because there's a lot of noises coming out of Huddersfield and Salford went there and blitzed them mm -hmm. and they've had some performances like that this year potentially they're not going to have that be this fortunate next season you know mm -hmm. obviously there's there's rumours around a couple of the halfbacks leaving and things like that so it, it is difficult and on, on a coaching point of view I've had it done to myself your players are playing really well and you take and then 
and then you say not to pre-season and, you, and you're starting over again. So it is, it is difficult. He's done a great job. He's a, he's a good coach and uh, he's a real good bloke as well. And I think that comes off in, in, in you know, how he, how he uh, holds himself in the media and, and in the public. I, think, I actually think that Salford gave two of the best performances this season in, in the whole of Super League. Not just winning at Warrington, but 45 nil at Catalans. That was that stunning. was that was yeah. outstanding. They were yeah. absolute. They absolutely blitzed the Catalans on their own ground, and you know just didn't put a foot wrong. Well, I think Alan teamed me up lovely for uh, my next question. I think you know it's coming. What what can you tell us about the future of Rob Louis and Jackson Hastings? Ian? Uh, I think it's documented. Jackson's obviously in demand. Mm -hmm. uh, Jackson will make his own mind up when he's ready. I think that's the. That's the type of character he is. We've had a chat about his future, and I've said, "Look, make the right decision for you, mate. And, mm -hmm. and if it's not with us, we shake your hand, and we, you know, we'll, 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 we'll remain friends. I think, and he'll do whatever's best for for him. He's been great for the club. He's been mm -hmm. really, really good for the club. You know, and for the game, and for the game. Yeah, he, he is, he's, he's, he's a great guy, great player. Rob Louis, uh, door's still open for Rob to play well and get a contract for next year. I think the rumours uh, going to all KR, they seem to have diminished a bit. I don't know exactly what's going on, but again, Rob pr played played really well this Sunday. Mm -hmm. So uh, last Sunday. So it'll be good to see what Rob turns up now for the rest of the season. You've obviously had a few players whose departures have been confirmed heading to 2020. Does that annoy you a little bit when you see them wearing the shirt, the scarf, what have you? It doesn't annoy me because I don't get annoyed at things like that. But it, I just don't think it does anything for the game, the image of the game. Mm -hmm. We seem to have like a mid-season transfer window now, which is fine mm -hmm. because that's in the operational rules and, and you know clubs can go for other clubs' players. So we understand all that and we're doing the same. There's no doubt about it. You can do that. I just think as a game we need to think about do we really start parading players with other sh team shirts mid-season and doing yeah. videos. I think you know, you're know you working for your current employer so I have a bit more respect for the game, not just for, for Salford. I'm, I'm just thinking game wide because I saw it all on the social media circles when, when uh, not just our club, other clubs were doing it. And I just saw all the negativity. It sort of creates it. a conflict of interest, doesn't it? As We're well, not focusing for that, on the current game, for, for that player, you know, when when you know, if a player is parading in a shirt that's not not that of his current club, and then his current club plays that team, there's always that sort of mm. thing. I don't think it, it's ever no. um, true, but you could. Some people could suggest there's a. You know, where do his loyalties lie? I think, well, a, I think there's a timing issue for this yeah, game. Yeah. I, think, I think the game needs to just look at the timing issues. I understand that if a player's not staying at club, he then has a bit of time to secure another contract. No problem mm. with that from an employment mm. point of view. Totally agree with that. I just think it's the timing of the announcements. If we could all agree to do something on that, it, it'd be better. Well, Leah's the other thing. Now, this isn't one that's been announced, but it's been well documented that Jordan Abdul's going to Hull KR. Hull KR and London are joint bottom. They play each other Thursday. I mean, if that was announced, you. you that's the sort of position where you don't really want Salford. your players or your clubs to be in, is it, Alan? No, I think Salford's a good example. A couple of years ago, million pound game where Tim Sheen's actually left in it yeah, the yeah. week before. It, it, it can happen. You know, it's professional sport. We see it happening, but I totally agree. You know, whenever I've been at a club, just out of respect, I don't think you should announce it. And I think it can have a negative impact on your to the supporters, and that can come onto the field as well, especially back end of the season if you. If you you know you're going for a trophy or you're trying to stay in the competition and mm -hmm. people know that players are leaving, it can have a negative effect around the, around the club. What what's the answer then, Martin? Do we do we move back from May the first? Do we go maybe to June, July, or do we just have a? You can't a, stop players signing. You can't stop players mm -hmm. talking to other clubs. You, to think you could do that is ridiculous. But what you can do is prevent what, what Ian was talking about, prevent clubs from parading players, you know, in, in their shirts that are still playing with other teams. Mm -hmm. If there was a simple regulation that said that's not on, that would surely cure that element of it. But you'll never stop, you'll never stop, you know, if, if, if Salford have got some great players coming out of contract, you'll never stop other players, talk, other, other clubs talking to them. That's just you know, pie in the sky sort of stuff, yeah. isn't it really? Let's face it. I mean, we've done some signings for next year already and I've had the conversation, I phoned the CEO or the, or the owner up saying, look, we, we, we've signed one of your players, mm -hmm. but out of respect, I'm just not going to release anything at the moment. Yeah. And they've been fine with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but I just don't think it does anything for the game when we, do, we are releasing them this early in the season because we're losing focus on the current Absolutely, season yes. when, when all in the media yeah. is about transfer requests. And, well, you're, you're never, never going to stop the speculation in the media. No. I mean, look, you've been linked with players in League Express this week. It's, it's going to happen, yeah. but 
like you say, maybe well, just could not... do it officially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, it, I mean, whatever people want to say, it's speculation up until the point the club announces it, isn't yes. it? So, yeah, it is. is that what we do? Maybe move it back to, well, the end of the season. I don't think. Yeah, you can't move the the, the actual ones. Mine said that the, the players talking to clubs happens. Uh, that's in the operational rules. I don't think we'd probably change them mm -hmm. because it does give the the player longer to look for a new club. But I just I just think the announcement could do with the deadline. Yeah, just an embargo, an embargo on, on that. And I think it's better to announce them around set well, October when season ticket renewals, membership renewals yeah. are up anyway. I think that would, you know, might have a surge have a surge in, in well, I think that's in a good point then. actually. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. You know, mm -hmm. you you release information when it benefits you most and obviously that's when you Selling season tickets, isn't it? Well, why do clubs do it then, Martin? Why do they do it early? Is it because they, they don't like the speculation being there? or, or no, what? Well, you'd, you'd have to ask them. But, um, I mean, we're going to announce a load of signings quite all recently. All in one day. All in, yeah. Virtually all in one day, that's right. And so every individual player who they announce, it's sort of... Um, it, 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 it's then, you know, diminished by the next announcement, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So... You know, you just sort of wonder what their logic is, and I, I really don't know what it is. I no, really not, not, not had a communication off, off Wigan about that, but uh, yeah. Hull did something similar. Not, I'm not criticising them, club, because it's happened to virtually every club. It's just, mm -hmm. I think, we do normally communicate with each other, and if we're going to do a joint one, do a joint one, if all clubs agreed to that, but we certainly didn't know what was going on both them, on, on them players. And oh, so that you weren't even contacted to say no, we're going to announce No, we had a change in our media department as well, which probably didn't help. Sorry, right. But I just, what what my suggestion is, that I think there's, there's, it doesn't look good for the game. Mm -hmm. We just need to look at something that's a bit more uh, regimented than what we're doing at the moment, because it's, it's, it's all over the place. And from a press perspective, when, when they announce them more at once, it doesn't, it doesn't really, I mean, with League Express, we couldn't give it all no, the space no, that's for right. every single player. Yeah, we? yeah, no, we just have to give a limited amount of space to mm -hmm. each signing, um, instead of making a big thing about them, them all individually, mm -hmm. so it, it's it's a bit disappointing as far as we're concerned. But you know, mm -hmm. clubs must have a reason for what they do. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just not sure what it is. Just just on the field. I mean, like you said, you're in a very strange position where you can look up and you're not far off off the playoffs. You'd look down, you're not too far away from the bottom. What what's your hopes for the the rest of the season? We, we we're trying for top five. There's, there's no doubt about it. that. Was the aim at the start of the season. The squad and the spend didn't really have many people thinking we'd do that. Uh, but we played some really good rugby. And going back to you know Ian Watson, he's done really well with the boys, as as Martin Gleeson as well in the backroom team. I think we've only got one serious injury. Ed Chamberlain will be out for the rest of the year, so we've done okay yeah. for injuries. We've had injuries like every club has, uh, mm -hmm. but the spend when you compare it to other clubs, I think we've done exceptionally well. We did well to stay in Super League last year. That was a big big effort mm -hmm. considering some of the form we showed. Uh, but no, it's a it's a it's a funny year this year. But I'm confident going into games we can really show up. And as mine said, we've been close when we, even when we've got beat. It's not been by many. I think mm -hmm. eight games within five points, so we're not far off. Mm -hmm. We do a good hiding, I know, but I hope <laughs> that doesn't come soon. But uh, yeah. but no, we're doing really well, mate. I'm, I'm enjoying watching us as well. Well, I'm sure we'll all be fascinated to see how Salford get on during the rest of the year. That second part done of rugby league back chat. We'll be back after the break to talk to Alan and more championship chatter. Welcome back to the final part of this week's Rugby League Back Chat from the LD Nutrition Stadium. Don't forget, you can get involved in the conversation too on Twitter at RL Back Chat. Alan, I'm going to come to you first uh, for this part. You've had your coaching career, you're currently out of the game. What's What's been going on in 2019 for yourself? Well, I've been doing a little bit of media work. Um, obviously, I, I didn't think I needed the break, but it's been good. I've had six seasons as a head coach, three in Australia and three with Rochdale, and last season was a little bit... Uh, up and down and, and quite a stressful campaign so it's been good just to um, you know reflect on 
my own coaching practices, if you like, my, my own management, what, what worked well, what didn't, what I'd do in different scenarios. So I don't think you always get that time to do that, you know, when you're going from game to game, pre-season to season to off-season. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been good in that sense, but, you know, I'm keen to get back in, into the game now, whether it's a head coach position or an assistant position. Yeah, you stepped away from, from Rochdale at the end of last year. You were, I think you got close on a, a few jobs that didn't, didn't quite come off. I guess you didn't foresee having that that break and you must be itching just to you know, start doing it again. Yeah, you miss it, especially, like I say, you've been doing it for six years, you miss all aspects of it, mm -hmm. the training, the the, uh, the, the banter with, with the lads and, and, and your staff. Uh, there's things you don't miss that you probably forgot about <laughs> when I was in there. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely, and I've been you know, very fortunate to watch quite a lot of games, covering games on, on for me on Super League, and also been keeping a close eye on the Championship and uh, and the NRL. So, uh, you know, different ideas that you know I like to bring back in when you know when that opportunity comes. What's what's the worst part about coaching? Then you said the things you don't miss. <laughs> what are they? I've, uh, well, you know, I'm probably text at, at, at midnight saying I'm not sure if I can play tomorrow, <laughs> and you know the you know the players, and obviously. The couple of clubs that I've worked at, uh, the team in Australia, Serena Crocodiles and obviously Rochdale, we, we didn't have the biggest of budgets, so um, washing sweaty bibs and kit at times and doing everything. I think in the championship, uh, head coaches will, will say you you do quite a lot of a lot of the stuff. You, mm. you know, you're the kit man, you're the media man, you're the you, you're doing a lot of, of things there. So you know, th there is there is some some negatives towards it, and you you do neglect your family at times. Um, uh, it's a pressure cooker, but um, I think you just he's probably just born into it and, and I do really enjoy coaching and, and that 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 uh you know trying to improve the players as people as well I, I think it's a big thing Martin he was surprised to see a coach like Alan not be able to get carefully he's close enough that he could hit you if he wanted to <laughs> but it, it, well, at the end of the day took Rochdale up kept Rochdale up oh yeah I think and, I think yeah. I think Alan ought to be back in the game and, and he ought to be back in the game soon I mean I I, I would um Suggest you know maybe looking at an assistance job in the in, in Super League, which is um, an obvious um, perhaps next step from having been a, a championship head coach. But um, no, I you know and I, I hope Alan does because obviously Alan's I, I thought I thought Alan's record at Rochdale was pretty good. You know as you, as you say, getting promotion, winning in Toulouse. Um, you know a couple of years ago it was wasn't it? It, it a tremendous results, and um, and I think he's shown. That he's got the ability to to really, you know, crack on and do a great job, but um, but the trouble is you never quite know where opportunities are going to come from, Alan. Do you? It, it, you know, you, you're always in a sense waiting for somebody else to get sacked, I suppose, <laughs> and that's the, that's the awkward thing. The only good thing about that is that you know somebody will get sacked probably. Oh, the beauty of coaching. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah. it, it must be it must be hard to get back into the game. It does seem like the the window of opportunity that's there is really small it's tough and I think opportunities are limited as well I've seen a couple of you know Sean Long for example has gone to rugby union mm -hmm. uh, this week and a couple of the coaches have been linked where they have four or five specialist assistant coaches mm -hmm. where Super League you might have one or, or two assistants so mm -hmm. it is very difficult um, all the money's on the field if you like you know mm -hmm. that's the sort of that's, that's the game we're in and um, yeah it is that, that case of being patient and like you said I did speak to a couple of clubs at the end of last season but I didn't want to have you know a similar campaign to, to my last yeah. one at Rochdale um, so so yeah well, I'm, I'm excited for the next challenge wherever it will come and hopefully it will come soon In the uh, the world of coaching it's it's not the easiest is it? No it wasn't for me when I finished playing it I just didn't fancy it, it was, uh, <laughs> I saw what happened to Gary Jack and Andy Gregory at the time when I was at Salford and I didn't, it didn't put me, put me off it to be fair so I took a different route in life but uh, it's, you know talking about players having good good breeding in championship Alan's come from a great breeding there <laughs> he's done it tough <laughs> at, at, at that end of it and, and I think you know if the opportunity arises uh He'll, he'll be well versed for, for stepping into a Super League role, definitely. Just quickly on Rochdale, must be a bit sad for you to see what's happening to them. This I were there on Sunday against York and they were dreadful. They they look like they're going down. It must be annoying, annoying, frustrating, disappointing. It is. It's it, a bit sad, really. Cause like I say, the the result in Toulouse that season, no one really tipped us to go up. We were, weren't tipped to make the playoffs in League One, and we got a sort of a team together that 
players that nobody else really wanted. We were very lucky. I got Chris Riley on a mm. on a shoestring deal. He come from Wakefield. He mm. he wasn't even in the game, and he scored the winning try in the final. And a couple of amateur lads. We just got a, a great group together, and we built on that. And and we finished ninth in the championship, and and then sort of the skeletons came out the cupboard. Then uh, you know that some of the debts and and last season was really tough, and I, I just felt when we finished ninth, we, had, we was in a really good position to to kick on. You know, if we'd, if we'd um, retained our best players and recruited uh, recruited well, I, I, f I felt we would have then got in a position where we know what you know where you're at. You know, we're not gonna do what we weren't gonna come. Pete for the top of the Super League, but mm -hmm. sustainable championship clubs, your Batleys, your Dewsbury's, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. those who are there or thereabouts every year, I think we could have really competed with them. And it, hopefully, um, they're going backwards at the moment to come back forwards because, you know, it, it is a, a good club with a lot of history and heritage. Mm -hmm. and uh, it, Yeah, it's, it's a rugby league town, isn't it? Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, and, you know, those towns, you know, on, on, on the western edge of the Pennines, Rochdale and Oldham, They've, they've, they've both seen better days. Um, you know, in, 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 the, in the 1950s, Oldham were one of the top clubs in the game and Rochdale were not that far off. And, um, you know, they've declined over the years in terms of the support that they get. And it would be nice, maybe relegation. I mean, they're going to be relegated this year, assuming that relegation does, does, does occur. Um, and maybe a spell in League One where they can string some wins together might actually be a... A benefit for them. Who knows? Just quickly, is it true that you coached Jason Tamalolo at one point? Uh, um, yeah, when I went over to Australia, Mackay cut his. I was assistant coach there. So um, that season, we won the comp. We was very fortunate that we was with the Cowboys. So we got Jason Tamalolo and Michael Morgan. <laughs> So we can put we can put their success down to you. Well, you know, I don't I don't, I don't want to take all the credit. <laughs> we were very lucky that the Cowboys got knocked out of the finals in week one. Right. Um, so then we got those two players, and, and yeah, the, the, it's the twenty thirteen premiers, and quite a few of those kicked on and and, and played. Uh, the, in the NRL and, and Super League. Well, I'm sure if you could get Jason Tamalolo to your next club, you'd definitely get employed <laughs> by anyone. Uh, just, just moving on, Martin, I want to pick up on something you said. Um, if relegation occurs in the Championship, mm. because the story in League Express this week, the Championship are talking about expanding to 16 teams. What's your thoughts? I'm not sure that's a wise decision, if I'm really honest about it. Um, not not for next year, anyway. Um, you know, I think I think... To, to change the structure again would be, you know, in the short term. I, th I think we've got to look at the structure from 2022 and decide what the best structure is from then. But let's not change anything between now and then um, without thinking of th thinking it through very carefully. Um, you know, we've, we've got clubs fighting relegation. We've got clubs in League One battling to come up into the championship, um, you know, Whitehaven doing well. Mm -hmm. Newcastle Thunder beat them at the weekend in a crucial game. They attracted a four-figure crowd. You know, let's not take away that excitement. For goodness sake, let's, mm. let's leave things as they are for next year and talk about it in the longer term. But yeah. let's stop making changes, you know, from one year to the next. I, we, we get sick of it and it... It, it, it's crazy. It, it, it's demoralising, I think, for people in the game. Ian, from the outside looking in, what mm. would be the logic of going up to 16 teams for the championship? I don't know what the thought process is there. I've not been privy to the meetings either because obviously mm. with Super League we have separate meetings now. So uh, I don't know what the thought process is, but I agree with Martin. I think we, we do change for change sake sometimes. I have no problem with changing business and in sport because it inspires, doesn't it? And it, and it re re revolutionises the game sometimes. But if you look at Super League, we've had promotion, relegation, we've had licensing, we've had mm -hmm. top eights, bottom eights, you know, top five. Now it, 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 we just need to find a format that's going to work for the game, not just the, you know, not just Super League, not just Championship. Dare I suggest there's also an issue here. We talked about maybe Super League going back to 14 at some point. If Championship was 60, we then talk about player pools and the yeah. That well, Martin's quite. right. I don't think we should do anything until the TV deals no. on, yeah. the, on the table, and we all know what we're talking about. You know, mm -hmm. we, we just seem to seem to be a bit of silo working again now, which was always my worry when Super League went on its own. Uh, yeah. But if it's for the benefit of the Championship clubs, and that's what the League One think decide, that's for them to decide. It would be a detriment of League One as well. I think their would. Their, their, their league shrunk this year because of that. And we talk about the bottom of, of the Super League being interested. Well, we look at the bottom of the Championship. Apart from Rochdale, who's adrift, there's maybe one from five there that yeah. could go down. There's 
that's getting quite interesting with Swinton winning in Toulouse in the weekend. What a result, by the way. We should give that a <laughs> credit. And Barrow beating Halifax, which yeah. you probably don't want to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Matthew's not that. keen on that, that result. <laughs> so that, that's going to be a really interesting end of the season as well. You know, Widnes are in the mix there as well. Tell you what, Swinton have started playing well from the moment Andy Maisie appeared on this programme. Ah, yeah, that's <laughs> very true. Yeah. They, the Swinton chairman. I mean, Salford are going to win the Super League then. Yeah. Yeah. On, on, yeah. That, on that. Well, we hope so. As you mentioned, though, it's at the bottom, people aren't mentioning it, but Witness are not on the greatest run and they're getting dragged into it a little bit. They look like the two were to go down. But. I think on home form, um, they, 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 they should be all right. But like I say, their squad's so skinny, a couple of injuries, and, and they're, right in, they're right in the mix there. Like I say, we've... Teams are going to pick up surprising wins. Dewsbury's won at Featherston and Widnes this year, so it's really tight at the bottom. Ian, we talk about broadcast deals in Super League. Uh, a lot of our league games have been the championship and they're, they're apparently getting really encouraging viewing figures. The crowds are going up. Yeah. Do you think that they're in a better position as a competition to get a, a strong, independent broadcast yeah, deal? Yeah, I think they are. I think they've got a great... They've got a great game there, haven't they? It, the brand's pretty good now as well, mm -hmm. so it's all building positive and I think they can go and look. There's a lot of streaming channels out there now I think that we've got to be really broad minded mm -hmm. when we do these deals now and, and maybe not go down one single route there's lots of options and when it comes to 2021 2022 when they're going to make the decision there'll be a few more options on the table so we just need to keep our our options open it I does think. seem like they're doing that as well twitch was used wasn't it for for some of the games and you got google live you've got yeah, everything now isn't it that's it? right that's right but what we really want to know is where's the money going to come from from 2022. I mean, it, it's perfectly okay having um, outlets like Twitch and you know various other uh, similar things, but but you've got to find somebody who's prepared to pay yeah. something for the privilege of of, of, of broadcasting mm -hmm. these deals. So I'm I'm not sure that it's a great idea to give it away in the meantime, mm -hmm. um, because we, we really we, we we're trying mm -hmm. to demonstrate that. There's a big audience there for, for the championship as well as for Super League. Can we just settle a, something else that's been going awash on social media at the minute? That Toronto might turn down promotion. I don't like, know who floated know. that oh, idea, but that's surely a, a crazy thought. The, I mean, the, the, you know, the, the suggestion's been for a while, Ian, that Super League don't want Toronto. Is that true? No, no, I don't think that's true at all. I don't know where that comes from either. And I've not seen the, the, the reason about, about Toronto not wanting to get up. Why, why, why would they want, not want to get up? Apparently, the, the championship is a great competition which, to which be in. Which is true, which, which, which we all agree true. with, but yeah. uh, I guess... Well, uh, I guess David's, uh, David Argyle's uh, vision is that he plays in Super League, surely, yeah. ju just for the, the home crowd, etc. And what they can bring to the game, uh, you know, internationally would be fantastic as well, mm -hmm. I think. so. Absolutely. And financially, they'd certainly offer you more, more competition, wouldn't they? But yeah. what they can bring commercially and everything else. Yeah, it's the same as Ottawa and New York and Toulouse. They're all building this hopefully good framework behind yeah. them. I just had one concern about... The expansion is that we we make sure we get some homegrown players. I know that's not yeah. not going to be easy in New York and Ottawa and Toronto. We've got to start thinking about how they really breed the game mm -hmm. in their you know relative countries. How, and count. how much time do they need to be given to be able to get Championship Super League standard players coming through? I think that's the question yeah, we need. Doesn't happen overnight. I think no. I think as long as you're nurturing the talent through, you can you can see a pathway. I was really concerned. Mm -hmm. What's the pathway? Show me the pathway before we agree to let you yeah. come into the leagues. I'm really keen on seeing a pathway. Well, it's really interesting cool. that you know, in in the NRL in Australia, Melbourne have been there now since 1999, so 20 years, and I think you can still count the number of players in the NRL who originated in Melbourne on the fingers of one hand. Yeah, it's not easy. You know, it's not easy to to you know they are expanding the number of junior clubs in in the state of Victoria, but it's a Aussie rules dominated mm -hmm. state, yes. and. It's really hard to get those kids. I think Mahe Fanua actually was one example of oh. um, of, a, of a Victorian uh, kid who who came through the Melbourne system, system and made the grade. Mm -hmm. But there are there are not that many others. Just on the to wrap up on the championship, we talked about the bottom at the top. Uh, is anyone stopping Toronto this time, Alan? Um, looks a difficult task, doesn't it? Especially with with their home advantage as well. Um, but I think there'll be a late surge. We mentioned Lee. Toulouse can beat anyone the day the way they play, and you know you won't rule a Bradford or a Halifax out on one-off games what they've done this year. So um, I think it would be good for the game for, for Toronto to, to go up and mm -hmm. uh, and what that brings you with, with broadcasting and, and everything else. So, um, but it's not a foregone conclusion.
Any anything to add to that? I think the club that's the biggest threat now is where we are at this moment, which is Featherstone Rovers. Aren't they? I think Featherstone Rovers are looking oh, well, looking very sharp. Um, I, you know, they're, they're 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 using dual registration quite cleverly with with Leeds and loan players as well. But they've got a, a good sort of base of local players. You know, allied to the club. I think they're going to do a real good job. Well, that's all we've got time for on this week's Rugby League Bat Chat. A big thanks to my guests, Martin Sadler, Ian Blees and Alan Kilshaw. Don't forget, we'll be back next week. In the meantime, you can get involved in the conversation on Twitter, at RLBatChat. But for now, goodbye.